Hello friends, welcome once again to the channel IT Simplified. I hope you find these videos useful and uh, subscribing to the channel. The topic for today is uh, Azure Batch. So we'll today look into what Azure Batch is and we'll also try to see what are the different components which makes this service and uh, finally we'll look into the pricing. So the first question arises uh, what Azure Batch is and what scenarios we can use it. So in simple term, Azure Batch is a service uh, in which you can distribute you, uh, your workloads uh, within uh, multiple nodes in the environment, which you can specify. And uh, you can uh, specify what jobs you want to run on that one. So you can basically break these jobs and distribute uh, among multiple nodes uh, within the pool that you create. Now, some of the examples of uh, Azure Batch that you see in the uh, market is a lot of customers, they use it for software testing execution. I also see the demand for media transcoding. And a lot of uh, customers, they also use this for VFX rendering. There are a lot of other uh, case scenarios for this, but these are some of the major ones that I see uh, customers, they use this uh, batch services, whether they are using on-prem or cloud, uh, that's up to them. But uh, uh, Microsoft Azure provides them the platform so that they can uh, utilize these on demand and they can schedule these jobs. So the second question arises, uh, like what uh, uh, what are the options available within uh, Microsoft Azure and what components uh, constitute this service? So when we talk about uh, the batch within uh, cloud, uh, the components which are involved in this service are the storage account and batch account. In storage account, you will basically upload the data file in the blob storage. And then you have a pool of resources. You call it batch pool. It consists of uh, multiple machines, multiple VMs. You can specify the low limit or the upper limit or the uh, max limit. So for example, if I have uh, these four VMs, I can specify to run parallel jobs on all these machines, right? That's the whole idea about the batch uh, pool is. And then you also have uh, the jobs that you'll create and in that you'll have a uh, multiple task. You can have multiple tasks. So these are the, some of the services that uh, you, uh, you will come across when you're configuring uh, the batch services. The good thing is that uh, there is no cost associated with the uh, batch service. So the framework which is provided for you, there is no cost associated with this, right? So the APIs that are provided by Microsoft Azure is absolutely free. You are charged for what VMs that you want to deploy or what series of virtual machines, and you're charged for the storage account, how much data you'll be uploading on this. That's, that's what the cost is, and we'll look into this. But the important thing is, if you want to run a high compute parallel jobs across multiple nodes within the environment, Azure Batch is the answer for that. And if I have to compare this with on-prem, sometime there can be a challenge because you're talking about massive scale, uh, which sometimes is very difficult to achieve uh, in on-prem scenarios. And uh, that's why the flexibility and scalability of the cloud that we can utilize. And you can always scale up, scale down, uh, and uh, you can uh, obviously schedule these jobs according to the uh, requirement.
Okay, I hope uh, this explains what Azure Batch is and what scenarios you can use this service for. Now, having said that, let me just uh, go to the pricing calculator and see what are the options available. So I'm on pricing calculator. I'm just gonna search for the service and you can see cloud scale job scheduling and cloud management. And let's look into this. You can deploy, I think in most of the region, the service. So the first option is the cloud service in which you can choose a tier. So you can choose from low priority to standard tier. Uh, now this selection or this choice you have to make and uh, what uh, scenarios you can use the low priority. So let me just explain this too. So within cloud services, as I mentioned that uh, you have uh, two options. You have low priority and you have standard right so low priority basically what it does is uh, as the name suggests uh, you're not prioritized so you might put say two virtual machines or three or ten or hundred virtual machines it is based on the available uh, 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 those uh, compute power within that uh, data center right so let's say assume you have these three machines that you have deployed within the pool but you might not be able to utilize uh, or it will be on demand basically that is what low priority is so uh, the case scenario for this kind of uh, uh, services in case you want to do use it for say dev and test you want to test it you don't want to use the standard tier low priority i think is a good case scenario for that one uh, other one is i think is uh, in case you have flexibility in terms of uh, how long is going to take uh, for job to be executed so time flexibility i will say right so uh, you might specify a job and if you put this in the low priority so say there are multiple jobs which are being run on this say job one job two job three and under the low priority maybe the job three won't run because uh, that capacity is not available within that pool and uh, you have to wait till that is provisioned for you uh, so in those case scenarios uh, you can also use low priority because obviously pricing is far more or less almost half as compared to the standard tier so a lot of uh, uh, web services uh, databases small databases are a good case scenario for the low priority uh, tier in this and standard obviously you know you have a dedicated resources for you so if you deploy say four machines so th those fours are dedicated for you so if there is a uh, you know you have that uh, hard line that you want to make sure that the job is uh, completed within that specific time you got to go with the standard tier and obviously for how co compute power uh, standard is a good case scenario for that too right so let me flip over to the pricing calculator so that is what the low priority and uh, the standard is and just to give an example if i use an a11 core with a 1.75 gig of ram 29.93 actually i'm going to change this to my local currency so 3831 and if i keep the same machine and change it to standard it is uh, 9531 uh, so more than the double the cost right so depending upon the case scenario so i'm just going to make it to 2 vm right so i have 2 vms in the pool and that is the pricing i will pay in that case so okay let me just reduce it uh, so that's one one thing that you need to keep in mind low priority and uh, standard under cloud services and there are also a lot of customers as they said that one of the case scenario is the virtual uh, vfx rendering so a lot of customers they're using batch for that and there are different rendering tool that you can utilize you can use uh, 3d max you can use autodesk maya uh, so there is a v-ray so there are a lot of options which are available so in case uh, you fall under that kind of categories again you have the option of choosing between low priority and standard obviously you will choose the instance or the series of virtual machine that you want to there are different options available for you you can see 
uh, you can go up to 192 gig of RAM in the low priority and if I go to the standard you have uh, you have all these options available too right you can go M32 TS series and a lot of other options whichever you want right specific kind of power specific kind of RAM you can utilize but uh, Microsoft Azure gives you the flexibility so there's a licensing call for cost associated with these rendering tools and uh, I can specify over here so say for example for Autodesk Maya it goes by per VM per hour so I'll be paying this cost for that if I'm using 3d max I'll be paying uh, that is also uh, computed based on per VM per hour and then there's the Autodesk Arnold which is based on per core per hour and uh, then you have the V-Ray which is also based on per core per hour but that gives you an idea also about you know the licensing costs for these rendering tool you can utilize and uh, uh, you can schedule it so as long as you're running this uh, you'll be paying for that but there are certain costs which will be always consistent so say for example as I explained uh, you that uh, you'll be uh, there will be when you create these services you need to create a storage account in which data file is uploaded and also in the pool the VMs that you'll be uh, utilizing for the time being that machine will be running you'll be charged the compute for that one and while they're scaled down there's no charge but there will be still a charge for the storage of that series of virtual machine or whatever data disk also you have attached to that right but again uh, these kind of scenarios if you have to create it maybe on-prem it can be challenging uh, because from the cost perspective but uh, Azure give you the flexibility of uh, job scheduling uh, scaling up scaling down and uh, some of the other features which are sometimes can be a little bit uh, I will say uh, difficult to achieve uh, when we talk about on-prem kind of scenario so this is what Azure Batch uh, in nutshell is and some of the scenarios that you can utilize. I hope you found this video on this service useful. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.